Alrighty, how's everybody doing today? Happy freaking Sunday. How's everybody doing? What's up, Kataj? What's up, girl? What's up, Improving for Cuban? What's up, Doc? What's up, uh, Eco's here as well. AJ's here. Django's here. Red Zeros is here. Welcome back, everybody. Great to see you all this fantastic Sunday. I hope all of our weekends are going absolutely freaking fantastic. It's time to do our little bonus cooking stream. We haven't been doing our cooking streams uh, quite at the consistency that I was planning on for a while, but uh, just kind of trying to figure out some stuff that I've been wanting to do for a cook stream, as well as like find the time to do get multiple cooks in to make sure that I'm super comfortable with the recipe. What's up, Bolina? How's it going, Silence? What's up, Value? What's up, Kooky? Welcome back. Assigned to cook a fine meal, but a skill is only six. Hey, six is just enough to construct a fine meal. Actually, this is definitely something that's just a simple meal, because it doesn't require any kind of meat ingredient in it, right? So, it doesn't, it's not half and half, there's just no meat in it at all. So, we're all good, Kooky, we're all good. What's up, Aki? How's it going? Happy Sunday to you as well. What we're going to be making today is aglio e olio, spaghetti aglio e olio. Um, what we're going to be utilizing today for this dish is we are going to be utilizing Parmesan cheese. We have a 10 month old aged... It's not aged for 10 months, it's just been sitting in the fridge for 10 months. But um, yeah, this is a, a 10 month aged uh, Parmesan. We have uh, olive oil. For this dish it would be nice to kind of have like a, a decent olive oil. It doesn't have to be like a crazy expensive olive oil or anything like that because we are going to be cooking with it. But um, a nicer one is, is pretty good because we use quite a, a, like a decent bit of uh, the olive oil and it's going to be definitely one of the kind of key flavors of the dish. We're also using crushed red peppers and that's uh, going to be going in the oil along with garlic. We're going to be using most of the bulb of garlic. We'll be uh, kind of go getting to that when we when we get to that. I'm probably going to be using at least three quarters of this. So uses, this uses a lot of garlic and we're going to be using parsley as well as, so I said the olive oil. I've got a, a pot of water over here that you can't see that I'm just going to turn on right now. Get that going. And uh, we have a box of noodles, or in this case, a cup of noodles. I mean, and if you don't have if you don't have a, an asteroids cup to hold your noodles in, you can use them in a box too, and then just use them straight from that. But um, definitely, definitely would prefer the asteroids cup full of noodles. That's definitely so it makes them a little bit more a little bit more fresh. Don't store your plastic in the pan. It can get pretty sticky and smelly pretty fast. Look, that's fine. That's fine. Look, I'm just I'm just preheating it. It's just preheating. I'm just gonna throw the parmesan that I don't that I don't use uh, in in that. I don't have the heat on this pan here yet, so it's it's, all, it's fine. Don't worry. I probably won't melt the melt the plastic. I just don't have any room for anything. They have more minerals that way. Yeah, exactly. It's so much, much more fresh. You got some 10 month aged lettuce in your fridge. Yeah, you could, you could use 10 month aged lettuce in place of the Parmesan, but it's, you definitely would prefer, would be way better off to just utilize the Parmesan. What's up, Sir Alice? Asteroids noodles are the best noodles, indeed. Okay, so uh, we're going to be needed to do a good bit of grind, uh, grinding, a uh, good bit of grating for this Parmesan. I'm going to use uh, not the whole thing but uh, about three quarters of this we're going to be grinding up here. It's going to take a little bit of time so we might as well just get started with that. I really like this dish a lot because it's really easy. Like the most difficult thing is grating the Parmesan and you could use pre-grated Parmesan but because it has like essentially like some kind of cornstarch in it to prevent it from sticking in the bag. It kind of causes the cheese when it melts to kind of clump together a lot. It keeps it separated when it's when it's um, in the bag, but when you use it in, in, in like a sauce, or in this case we're going to be basically once the noodles are cooked, um, they, you know, they you kind of spread it over and mix it throughout the dish. It kind of uh, 
just clumps all together and so it's not like a clump of Parmesan is, is bad but it's if it's not thoroughly mixed throughout the dish then it's not gonna be quite the way that we want it cooking with gas yep this is actually the first stove that I ever uh, at this place that I've ever used with gas every other place that I've ever lived and growing up always had electric and I like, I like them both they work they both work fine can you put some cloth under the bowl to keep it in place I can I think, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. I got cloth under the cutting board to keep that in place. So that's, that's, uh, <laughs> that's not moving. Seven to one odds, Billy has his knuckles on the grater. Oh, come on, we're fine. Just lift up and it's just a, it's just blood, it's just blood in there. That's fine, don't worry about that. Yeah, some cloth under the bowl would be a good idea. Eco knows what he's doing. Eco, you should be, you should be the one doing this. I think I have a cloth over here. Let's do that. Eco seems to know what he's talking about. There we go. No, it's not moving around nearly as much. Oh my goodness, you're a genius. Here I am thinking I know what I'm doing. I don't know, Jack. So we're about a little more than. Really, like considering the, the 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 front part of it is so much thinner, we're definitely it's like halfway through here. Um, that's probably just about right. We'll grind a little bit more. We're not gonna. I can. You can just put all mix all of it in when we get to that part. But um, I, I'll probably just save a little bit of it and then. Um, and then just kind of sprinkle it over the top just to make it uh, look a little bit nicer. All right, I think that's pretty much all I need here. Let me go ahead and put this in there and set this off to the side. Maybe I'll come back and grind a little more, but I think that's going to be perfect. I'm not measuring here, but that looks like a little bit, like a little bit more than a cup of uh, grated Parmesan. So we're going to be using, this is actually what we're going to be essentially using to finish the dish. So I don't need this for a little bit. So I'll set that off to the side. Set that off to the side over here. I don't want that on the oven. I need to get less stuff on the oven because we're going to start cooking on it soon. Oh, classic Kirby music? Oh, you know what? I'm supposed to have that music off. I'm sorry. I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's nice, but uh, I don't want that on right now, actually. I totally forgot. You learned it here a few streams ago when you put the cloth under the cutting board. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, like I said I got the cloth. I got a I got a cloth under the cutting board to ensure that that doesn't uh, that doesn't slip around. So you can see, like underneath of this, we have. Uh, it's actually just like a like a one sheet of paper towel folded in half. It's just a little damp to make sure that well, that doesn't uh, slide around. The big cutting board that it's on top of is so large that it like it takes a lot to like move it around so I'm not usually too concerned about that. Now um, we're gonna be using like I said just about all of this garlic and uh, we're gonna kinda break this apart. I got a little, a little bowl here to Hold all the extra bits, just kind of press down on it, and it'll all break apart just like that. And like I said, we're going to use most of it. And the dish uses a lot of garlic, but it's not going to be overpowering in garlic. Or like the garlic isn't going to overpower it. I promise. Some of these smaller ones, I won't bother using. Um, just because when we we're going to be cooking it in a long time in a good amount of olive oil and it's really going to mellow out the garlic so you're not going to be eating this dish and it's not going to really be a super intense garlic flavor unless you burn the garlic in which case it's going to taste not too pleasant which is definitely something we need to watch out for but we're not going to do that hopefully. Layer your flavors and your cutting board. That's right. Okay, so um, right here I have my little paring knife. This was on my 
on my wish list for a while and NJ Poolboy picked this up for me. It's a really beautiful paring knife. I've never owned a paring knife before before this. It's really awesome. It's a Dell Strong. It's the from their Shogun series and it is absolutely phenomenal. I've I essentially use it every single day because I I uh, use a, I usually I, I really like cutting up apples instead of just eating a whole apple. I like cutting them up first and then and then snacking on them. So I use this I use this every day uh, to do that. So I get a lot of use out of it. If you don't have a paring knife, you can just use a normal knife. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, the paring knife is a little bit more applicable for this, but pretty much anything that we're doing with the paring knife, we can we can do with um, with a big knife as well. So um, the way that we're going to kind of peel this garlic is basically we kind of want to just kind of break it just a little bit, so that way it'll be easier to take the skin off. And then we could take the paring knife and we could just kind of cut the uh, the the root end off here. We're going to cut that off, and then, not always, but usually, usually we can kind of, once we have the root end off, we can kind of peel back the, uh, the skin and kind of get it, uh, get just the garlic bits by itself. Sometimes you can kind of pinch the back end of it, and it'll just pop out. Sometimes it works. I don't know. I think I, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to garlic, you just got to kind of play each one by ear because it's, uh, because they can just be a kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. I know that you can kind of take them in a couple of bowls. So there we go. We got those. There's actually two little bits together that with no skin on it. We're going to do that to all of these. There we go. Uh, here, garlic is like uh, is is really super super starchy. So your hands are going to be sticky as all hell when you're when you're working on this. I'm going to have to rinse off my hands when we're done here. In fact, I might have to rinse off my hands part way through because it makes getting the skin off even even more difficult. Great meal to eat before going to the movies to ensure proper free space around oneself. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. All right, here we go. The flavors here, or the, the smells here, are just absolutely phenomenal. Like we just grated that Parmesan, and uh, you know, chopping up some, uh, prepping some some fresh garlic is just. I, I wish I wish there was smell vision, but there isn't. So I'm the one that gets to enjoy all of the amazing smells. But you'll have to take my word for it, and eventually go out and do it yourself because it smells absolutely phenomenal. Once we have all these garlic. Uh, all this garlic prepped. This is giving our our water time to boil. Yeah. But once we have all this prepped, then we're going to be slicing these into very thin slices. And uh, you could like mince it or use pre-minced garlic. I th I think that the the thin slices is the traditional way to do it, and I think it comes out really really amazing when it when you use the thin slices. Like we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to how to do that. So I would definitely recommend using it that way. All right, keep cutting these ends off and peel this back. You can see that my hands are are covered in in the starch from the garlic. So this is this is what's going on here. This is what's going on. You could have a bowl of water and kind of dip them, dip the garlic in it as well, because they can have a tendency to keep the. Uh, we're making aglio e olio, is what we're making today. And that is garlic in uh, garlic oil, and it's, so we're going to be baking it with uh, spaghetti, which is the traditional way to do it, I guess. All right, this listen, garlic, you need to. You need to give me a break here. You're killing me. All right, I gotta. I'm gonna have to rinse my hands because this is this is ridiculous. Garlic, please. That's fine. You can hear the water starting to kind of get to the point where it's going to be boiling. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and rinse off my hands because garlic is being a pain.
All right, there we go. It's good for vampires. Compared to my only cooking skill of ramen noodles, I'm basically watching a cooking wizard. Well, it's all going to come together, and it's really going to seem like wizardry when you do it yourself, because it's really not that difficult. The garlic is the most difficult part of all of this, and it's just because handling garlic like this is a bit of a pain. It's perfect for vampires. That's, I mean, I, I, I personally am sure to force every single person I know to make this dish and send me the footage because, you know, I mean, you gotta be, you gotta be sure. You can only be so sure with mirrors and silver and crosses because, I mean, that's only, that's only half consistent. The wizard was inside of you all along. That's right. There we go. See, that one was nice. That one was nice. I freaking plucked the back end of it, and it just popped out. None of the other, <laughs> none of the other ones were nearly that kind. I'm gonna cut the tip. There. Let's see if this one. See, that one was nice too. Like I swear, I'm trying. Like I said, there's a lot of garlic here, but it's really not gonna overpower the dish because we're gonna cook it down in the oil. Nope, not this one. This one don't want to do that. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it don't. There we go. Alright. The garlic you use doesn't stick like that. I also never use that much garlic in a dish. Holy bananas. Trust me, it's not going to be too much. You gotta believe me. You gotta believe. Like I said, it was most of, there's a few uh, cloves here that I didn't use from that, uh, from that bulb, but I'm using, every, I'm using the rest of it. So this is all going to be nice and thinly sliced here. My water is boiling for my noodles, and that is totally fine. We're going to let that just do its thing. I'm going to get a little container for the garlic. Uh, actually, never mind. I'm just going to put it in right from the cutting board. Okay. So, now we want this garlic thinly sliced, and what, I, what we're going to do is basically kind of like the way that we chop pretty much anything, uh, as long as it's kind of small like this, we're going to be ensuring to wipe that knife off. Come on, garlic. Get out of there. There we go. We're going to be ensuring to use our finger to guide the knife, okay? We're using kind of our knuckle in the in the side of the knife, and this is what we're using to cut down, okay? I'm not having my fingertips out like this. I'm not holding the garlic like this. I'm holding it like this, and we're using our knuckle to help guide the knife down, and we're going to do thin slices on all of the garlic. So, up, down, just like that. So, we get some nice Thin slices, that piece got kind of broken up just a little bit. But hold it down, keep your fingertips back, and make sure your thumb doesn't push forward because that's a good way to get cut as well. Then we got some nice thin slices, just like that. That one's kind of thick. I'll cut that one in half. Like I said, paring knife not required for this. You could very easily just use a normal knife, but paring knife is a little bit easier to handle as far as uh, small stuff like garlic goes. How's it going, Pat? We're making we're making aglio e olio is what we're doing. Okay, and nice and thin slices. This is the these are the kind of slices that that we should be looking for here. Very, very nice and thin. I almost let my thumb slip slip ahead there. 
and that's that's really like the 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 way that the way that you get yourself a lot of the time that I find is you let your thumb slip forward. It's anti-vampire nights. That's right. All right. Nice, very nice. Now, there we go. Got a whole bunch of garlic. And like I said, I know that's a lot of garlic, but it's not going to overpower the dish. I promise. Get all those garlic bits off of there. Put that knife to the side. All right. So, now, uh, water's boiling. I'm going to go ahead and put the noodles in there now. You can't see them, but there's water over here. And I got my, as I said, if you do have spaghetti noodles, if you can get them in an asteroids glass, that is optimal. But I know it's kind of like sometimes you can find noodles in an asteroids glass and sometimes you can't. You meant to thank you for being something I could tune into when I was recovering from recent cellulitis infection. Couldn't use your brain. Couldn't use brain in the world. I really appreciate your consistent schedule. All. Thank you so much for the kind words, M. Grant, and it's my pleasure, and I'm glad that uh, this is a place that you can come and hang out. My pleasure to be here for you, man. Thank you so much for all the support, as always. What's up, Zuff? How's it going, man? All right. So I'm going to go ahead. Uh, the water's boiling here. I do have this water over here is salted. And uh, usually what I do as far as noodles go is, I mean, I'll, I'll check them around, like, uh, whatever... Like, I'll just generally use whatever instructions that the box has as far as noodle time, because the manufacturer knows how the noodles are supposed to be cooked. I know how I want them to come out, so I'll usually kind of check them a little bit early, make sure that they're the texture that we want, but obviously looking for a little bit of a bite in the noodle. We don't want it to be crunchy, we just want a little bit of resistance. We don't want the noodle to melt in our mouth. That's not what we want. I'm going to get these noodles in here. They don't all fit in, and that's fine. They'll they'll melt in. All right. Just want to make sure they don't stick right off the bat. I'm gonna set a timer for uh, nine minutes, which is gonna be a little long, but I'll check them at like around the eight minute mark. I'll try and keep an eye on that. Now, what I need to do here is I need to get some olive oil in the pan, and we don't. I'm gonna put this on medium heat, and then I'm gonna be reducing the heat. I'm going to be using quite a bit of olive oil here, much like the garlic that does get quite a bit of olive oil. It gets, gets a lot of olive oil as well. Basically, I'm just going to be looking to cover the, cover the bottom of the pan here. I think it comes out to about a half a cup of olive oil, maybe a little bit less. This is going uh, throughout the entire box of noodles, though, so I'm not going to be adding any other oil to the dish. So I put that on medium heat for right now. We're going to add the garlic in. And what we're going to be looking for here, I'm going to spread the garlic out in the pan. We're going to be looking for the uh, garlic to kind of, the oil to start to bubble right around the garlic is what we're going to be looking for. I got a wooden spoon here to kind of spread it out in the pan. So a lot of oil here, a lot of garlic. It's going to be fine. Once the garlic starts to kind of bubble, kind of set that off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and uh, breaking or not breaking the noodles really depends on the dish you're making and how you want to present it. Yeah, you could break the noodles. I don't like breaking the noodles too often. And um, yeah, I kind of had this cup a little bit too close to that uh, freaking boiling water, unfortunately. That sucks. Rip half cup measuring cup. I'm going to just continue to mix the noodles here, make sure that they're not sticking. So you can see that the garlic is starting to bubble, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want to see. Okay, I'm sure you can kind of hear that. And we're going to turn this down low. I don't want that to sizzle like 
freaking crazy like it's going right now. So we're going to turn the heat way down. I just want it to be bubbling. Okay, we're just want to be lightly sautéing this garlic. I'm not looking to fry it. I just want it to be lightly sautéed. You got to kind of keep an eye on it. And if it goes too uh, if, it, if you cook it too fast, you're going to burn the garlic, and if you're not familiar with burnt garlic, then um, it, it, it's bitter, and it's gross, and please just keep an eye on your garlic. Don't walk away from the garlic. Don't do it. What's up, Scott, by the way? Welcome back. Great to see you, as always. the heat way down here so it's not sizzling quite as bad just kind of bubbling away make sure that this doesn't overcook too fast it's just going to take like five minutes it's really only going to take uh, just about the time that the, that it takes for the noodles to cook so it's not going to take too long okay that's like perfect it's not like sizzling like crazy bubbles are just kind of coming up on it it was it's not nearly as aggressive as it was before just gives these give these noodles another stir make sure that they're not sticking together looks like they're doing fine over in the sink i do have a uh, a strainer ready to go so we're all it's, it's a little bit of a spill don't don't mind that sound what was that sound billy mm, nothing what, what was that what do you mean nothing Yeah, we couldn't do medical on that file because they were all incapacitated. <laughs> do, 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 do. It always makes you hungry. Well, it should make you hungry. You gotta go out and make it yourself, Jitterbrick. Oh God, burnt garlic! Do not burn the garlic, please. Don't burn the garlic. Okay, so we've been in the pan here with this garlic for a few minutes, and what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is uh, sprinkle in some crushed red pepper. And uh, much like kind of the garlic is going to kind of be diffusing its flavor throughout the olive oil, the red pepper is going to be doing the same thing. I'm just going to kind of uh, make sure that all of it is kind of got all, like all, the entire area of the pan. Like I'm not measuring here, I'm just kind of making sure that the entire uh, area of the pan has at least a little bit of crushed red peppers in it. And this is going to kind of bring the heat up. It's not going to really, it's not going to make it crazy spicy. Just looking to add a little bit of flavor. The parsley that we're going to be using is that we're going to use. I'm just using dried parsley, but we're going to be using that last. If you have fresh parsley, awesome. Um, I have dried parsley, so that's what I am using. I'm not going to go out and buy fresh parsley when I have perfectly fine dried parsley to do the job. And I'm just kind of mixing this up. What we're looking for here is to make sure. That uh, what we're looking for in the garlic is to like look for look for uh, some bits uh, like the bits of garlic to start to get, to get nice and golden brown. Once that happens, we're going to turn the uh, we're going to leave the heat like it is. But I'm going to add some of the pasta water into here. If the pasta gets done before the um, before the garlic, then I will have to pull some of the water from from the from the noodles. That's fine, not a big deal. So you can see garlic still just bubbling away there. Let's see if I need water from that. I guess I just have my melted plastic cup here. Yeah, see, I like I set like I said, I kind of limited in space here, and I just wanted everything at hands at arm's reach. And uh, we kind of have my half cup. And what's what's that, Billy? Not nothing. Uh, no, that's nothing. What do you mean? It's nothing there. That didn't get melted at all. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> What's going on? What do you mean? Uh, but we're going to be adding the pasta water into there, not only uh, just as a little bit of flavor, but also uh, to make sure that the garlic doesn't overcook. And like I said, we're looking for the garlic to kind of start to get a little bit brown, and we do not want to wait any longer than it's starting to get brown, because if you do, then you're going to, you might end up with it kind of being burned. But if, like on the first sight of it starting to darken, we're not going to turn it off. We want to, we want, you know, you know, it all to get like that, but still, 
That's why you use metal measuring cups and spoons. Well, I don't have any metal measuring cups and spoons, M. Gran. How are you supposed to tell that fire is hot if you don't have things that melt? Well, you want me to... <laughs> so, new measuring cups, cups time? Yeah, maybe, girl. Yeah, I guess. So, do you cook for yourself all the time? I cook. I like cooking quite a bit. Especially with the cooking stream that we've been doing. I, I really am enjoying it because it's giving me like a... Um, you know, a, a new like a like a new suite of uh, recipes to be able to to use, which is really awesome. So, like, I've learned all, how to do all kinds of different stuff through the cooking stream, stuff that I certainly wouldn't have ever uh, necessarily gone out and done like on my own time or anything like that. So, it's not a half cup measuring cup; it's an almost half measuring cup. Very useful in cooking. Yeah. See, I mean, if look, I wouldn't have ever had an almost half cup measuring cup if it weren't for using plastic, right? There we go. May maybe Kuno. Maybe 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 we'll see. All right, let me take a look at this garlic. These noodles. Uh, I gotta check the noodles. The timer's about to go off. I'm gonna guess that they're actually done right now. But come on, noodle. Perfect. Okay, got to pull them right now. Where? Okay, here we go. Turn the heat off on these noodles, and I'm gonna get them strained. I need. Um, some water from the noodles and I can't get enough in this half a cup thing so I'm gonna go ahead and scoop out about about a, about a cup's worth here of that uh, noodle water because I want that to go in the garlic but it's not quite done yet and I need to get the, the noodles off the boil here we're not going to rinse the noodles. We're just going to pour them into the strainer. Just running a little bit of cold water to make sure we don't melt the pipes. Heats off on the noodles. Very nice. This is a gas stove, yes, in Grand, that is correct. You've never seen someone putting garlic into olive oil. Doing this makes the garlic taste bitter, no? We're not overcooking the garlic. Like I said, do not overcook the garlic. It's just starting to brown. Just starting to get nice and brown, so we're going to add that pasta water to stop that cooking. Very nice. All right. Turn the heat off. Okay. Now, I'm going to set this off to the side so I can get the pot of noodles because I'm just, like I do for pretty much anything I utilize with noodles, I'll just use the pot itself to add, the, add this into the noodles. Yeah, only if you burn the garlic is it going to get bitter. There's no chemical reaction happening causing the garlic to be bitter. But like I said, this is nice. Just starting to get brown. No blackness in the garlic. I'm going to move this over here. And get the pot. So I'm going to take the noodles that are strained. Those noodles in there. Nice. Alright, let me take this and get this out of the way. And this and this out of the way. Now, get this up here so you guys can see. Now, we have, we're cooking aglio e olio. Garlic in oil. So now we have this beautiful it's really just smells fantastic I can't tell you how great the smells oil olive oil garlic crushed red peppers and a little bit of the pasta water getting that all in there
Beautiful. All right, so we're going to take our noodle mixture here. Heard something sizzling, but it's just the heat of the bottom of the pan. It's got some oil on it. We're cooking a simple meal. Yeah, it's not. It's not a fine meal because it doesn't have any any meat in it. Sound. What's up, sound? By the way, you're late, but you made it. It's all good, man. It's closer to a lavish meal, but that requires ten meat and ten of a and ten of a vegetable. All right. So now we have all of that grated parmesan that we had earlier, right? We're going to be adding that in now, and that's going to really kind of thicken this up. We're not going to, well, I'm not going to add all of it. I'm going to add about, about like 80% of it, maybe, something like that. Get that in here, save a little bit to be topping it with, and I'm going to use the spoon that I have here as well. We're just going to kind of pull that up and mix this in. Yeah, it's kind of like thickening the oil, make sure that we have in there, right? Just covering all those noodles, making it nice. And luxurious. And the one thing, you know what I actually forget to do all the time in this dish? Which I, I've made I've made this a lot uh, because it is freaking fantastic. I've made this a lot recently since I learned how to make it. Uh, I always forget salt and pepper, but this needs salt and pepper. Generous amount of salt and some grinds of pepper and we're going to be adding the parsley in as well. The parsley adds a nice bit of brightness. This makes it like a little bit more fresh even though it's dried parsley. Trust me. But it also like, you, like the, the one thing that I would definitely say that the parsley also adds, which is not nothing, is it adds, um, it adds a nice like kind of visual, it makes it look a little bit nicer, because this is quite a, kind of a flat toned looking dish, right? Today you learn that onion rings are actually as old as the 18th century, if not older. Really, I'm grand, I didn't know that. Very nice. That is beautiful. Okay, starting to get a little bit of a clump up on the thing here, but that's okay. Now I'll add in some parsley. Um, I don't know, probably about like a like a tablespoon of parsley. About I just kind of gonna gonna get it nice and covered. Maybe a tablespoon and a half. There we go. Go with that. If I need a little bit more, I can always shake it on. This parsley smells fantastic. All right. Like I said, this dish just goes so quickly, and it's just really easy to do. You know, there's not many dishes. The most difficult thing is is uh, is the garlic. And if you wanted to use like pre-minced garlic, you could, but I really think it's worth it to use fresh garlic and slice it nice and thin like that. I think it makes it come out even more nice. I'm going to add a little bit more parsley, just going to sprinkle it on. All right, now, I'm going to set this off to the side. We're going to get this in a nice little bowl. There we go. Look at that. Get out of there. And we'll take a little bit of that Parmesan, sprinkle that over the top, and that right there is Aglio e Olio. The blue, the blue willow bowl. Yeah, we brought the bowl back. The one, the one bowl that Scott likes. Out of everything that I've ever shown on stream, Scott's like, oh okay, yeah, that's a pretty good one, but everything else is poop. Everything else is poop. If it were me, the pot would be the bowl. 
Yeah, well, I mean, this is this the 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 pot's what I'm going to be using. This is just this is just for show, right? This <laughs> is just for show. How about meat? No meat in this dish. I've never made this with any meat personally. I mean, I would imagine I would if I was going to have a meat uh, into this, I would definitely use chicken, but I really do not think that it needs it. I think it's a standalone dish by itself. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Maybe a piece of bread on the side. I know it's going to be really heavy on the starch, but I definitely think that it doesn't doesn't really need a meat element to the dish, personally. I think it's fantastic because it goes so quick and so easy. You'd say pork. Pork might go fine. Pork might go fine. But then again, I just really like chicken with just about anything. A little salad could be nice on the side of this too. Yeah, that would really lighten it up for sure. That's the same kind of dishes that you had growing up. Oh, cool. For the blue one. That's pretty awesome. So yeah. So again, we made the aglio e olio, which is spaghetti in um, garlic oil. So what we used was, we used almost an entire bulb of garlic, probably what, a total of uh, six or seven uh, garlic cloves. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, we got to show you, I told you guys about my cucumbers, uh, me and Kuro's cucumbers that, that came in, and we have three of them picked from the garden, and they are fucking tremendous. So I got to show you that, that, just a second. But garlic, about a, and then for for the olive oil, I, like I said, I would recommend using a pretty, I like a decent olive oil. Not, it doesn't have to be fancy. Just like a, just like a not bottom shelf olive oil kind of a thing. And we use again in the oil with the garlic, we use crushed red pepper. It's really kind of brings a little bit of a heat. Not going to overpower it, at all. And then of course the, um, we used about a cup and uh, maybe about a cup, cup and a half of Parmesan. We used most of that in the dish and then saved a little bit to sprinkle on top just for uh, kind of presentation. Then it gets mixed in with parsley when it's all done. I think it freaking is amazing. Can we find the recipe somewhere? Man, that's a good idea. I should really have some sort of a, when I'm doing whatever dish that I'm, that I'm doing, uh, we should have like a uh, recipe kind of link or something like that. Unfortunately, I do not have anything quite like that at this time. I'm sorry for a You'll have to, you'll have, you could, uh, you'll have to watch the stream or you could Google it, I guess. Let me show you guys these cucumbers that came out of the garden. They're freaking huge. One second. Oh, you should have said you got a link. All you had to do was say you had a link, M. Grand. There, there you go. All right, here's a here. Let me get the cucumbers. Okay. Oh my goodness, they're wet. So, the cucumbers out of the garden. There's this cucumber. Hang on, let me move this off to the side. Screw you, ugly yo yo yo. This is cucumber time. We have this. That cucumber. That's a pretty big cucumber. I'd say that's a pretty big one. We got that cucumber right there. That's, well, that's pretty big too. But then we have the monster cucumber. Sweet baby Jesus. That is a huge cucumber. So it's the first time we've ever done any gardening and um, cucumbers are the only thing that actually uh, had, a, had the chance to even grow and uh, we've got plenty of cucumbers coming up. We're going to pick other ones at uh, much smaller sizes, but these ones were kind of just snuck up. We got some humongous cucumbers, so that's pretty awesome. The Monster Cucumber. Now what I would suggest for the Aglio e Olio is just serving it with one entire cucumber. You could just place that right on top or you could put it on the side and uh, just don't chop it up. Make sure that it's entirely whole. And then uh, that's, that's pretty much it. That's what I would recommend. All right. Going to make dill pickles? Yeah, I'm going to be making pickles. Apparently, from what I, someone was saying the other day, is that the large pickles do not turn, or the large cucumbers don't turn into pickles. Like, they aren't good for pickling, from what I understand. I, I don't know. That's what they said. I need to do some research on it anyway. But either way. What's up, nice to meet? How's your weekend going? What's up, escape? Escapat. Happy Sunday to you all. All right, so like I said, we got the aglio e olio done, and I showed off my, the cucumbers. The cucumbers. So I will see you all 
in just a little bit, we're going to be doing our standard stream time. If you didn't already know, we're seven days a week, starting at 2 p.m. Eastern normally. And um, we're going to be back at 2 for FTL. I think we're probably just going to do an FTL run today. I don't know if we're going to do anything afterwards or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, I hope you guys had a fantastic time. I had a fantastic time. This is a really awesome dish, and I would highly recommend you giving it a try because it's really easy. It's really easy, and it tastes absolutely fantastic, and you're going to love it. Trust me, it's not too much garlic. Billy knows. So, yeah. We will see you all yeah, two hours and 50 minutes until FTL. The countdown has started. It's my pleasure to be streaming for you all, as always. We'll catch you later, Kuro and Pat and Sound and Eco and Kuki and Scott and Zuff. Nice to meet. Welcome again, Pleb. Welcome. And uh, Ed Tap. Imran I said, well Lena as well, we'll see you all in just a couple hours for some FTL, thank you so much for hanging out with me, would you recommend this dish for a date, well it's going to be garlicky, but I'd still, if, if you make it with, with your date, then yeah, absolutely, hell yeah, that would be great, so see you in a little bit guys, thank you so much again, we'll see you in just a little bit for some FTL, catch you later, peace.